Welcome to this talk on JS Applications in Agriculture. This is part one. My name is Balaji. I'm presenting this with Mr. Sridhar, who's a doctoral scholar at IIT Bombay. Now, look at population data presented in a tabular format. On the left, you have villages, the names of villages. On the right, you have the census figures in numbers. This is one way of presenting it. This is also a very popular way in newspapers, etc. This is how they present. But there could be another way. For example, you can present it as in a map. You can call it a map, in fact. This data, when presented in a map format, you can see here there are color codes. They reflect different population ranges. You can instantly make sense of the areas that are well populated, heavily populated, and ones that are underpopulated. For example, you can see here in this map that there is actually a city in the middle of a large number of villages. Now, if you believe the second way, the map way, is a better way of presenting population data, you have already got an idea of what GIS is. What is GIS? Geographic Information System, or GIS. It's a system designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage and present all types of georeferenced or geographically referenced data, more generally spatial data. And you mix it with non-spatial data where necessary. That is JS. This is at least our definition. You know, there are many variations in the way JS is defined in, in practice. What's georeferencing? It's nothing. It's simple. It's associating something with locations in physical space. Very similar to the way in a, in a graph on paper, you associate every point on the paper with a, a value of x and a value of y. That's as simple as that. Now, in, like you have coordinates on paper, you have geographic coordinates. Every position on Earth is specified by a set of numbers. The popular ones, very well-known ones, latitude, which is, which is a horizontal line on a printed map of Earth, longitude, which are vertical lines, and elevation, which is, of course, the height. These are generally used in georeferencing a particular uh, place. So JS definition, uh, continuing our discussions on it, JS definition is that spatial data is important in uh, JS and it includes place, time, and attribute. Now, geographic data can be uh, of uh, two, two formats. One is vector, the other is raster, and they can be different types, like, for example, points, lines, and areas. We'll go into them separately. A vector data you can see is presented at the right, and the vector data is often generated when you digitize a paper map. That's as simple as that. At the right side, you have raster data, which looks color-coded in, in, in some way, and this is generated primarily from satellites. In fact, most of the satellite-derived imagery is presented as raster data. What are attributes? You actually, you should call them thematic attributes for purposes in agriculture. You can say weather is an attribute. Land use, a group uh, of other types, can be an attribute. Hydrography is an attribute. Socioeconomic parameters, such as income status, ownership of assets, they can be thematic attributes. Now, each theme can be a layer. Like, for example, you can have uh, the physical map of an area over which you lay streets, buildings, or even customers, etc. as you can see here. These are all various attributes. So in effect, what is JS? It is related to data management. It's a, it's a way to relate data. It's a relational data management. The key aspect of JS is spatial data. The format can be vector or raster. The type can be point, line, or polygon. Visualization is an important aspect. Query and analysis are important uh, aspects related to uh, JS presentation and its eventual use in decision making. Now we stop here, this part, and uh, look at the exercises that we are giving you. Go to Google Maps, visit Google Maps, and select a favorite location. Look at the political map and locate and view Earth. And locate and view the imagery. Now, can you say something about the attributes you found there? Do that as an exercise, it's an open-ended one. The other is you should visit the site called Wikimapia. Locate your favorite street. And if you find that some details can be added, which are useful to others, to add them. And these are open-ended exercises. These are not going to be graded, but to help you get familiarity with this. There is going to be a part two. If you are interested, you should be visiting that as well. Thank you.